Hey guys, and welcome back to the remainder of day number 11 for the Sling TSI Build Assist here in Australia. Our previous episode focused on what happened in the majority of the day, which was all about the wiring um, of our Sling TSI. But the remainder of the day, we also ticked off a number of tasks. The video today is a little bit shorter than normal, just incorporating that we've already produced a fair bit of content from back then. So the remainder of the day was focused on uh, fitting our cow. So those that have been uh, watching the build all along would note that we did a, already a, a heap of work on the cow. Um, so today it was actually about fitting that cow onto the fuselage properly um, and getting it fastened. So that was a, a big box to tick. Uh, the other part was in the rear of the fuselage. So we spent a fair bit of time um, getting the rear seats mounted and also the rear floor attached. And then following on from that, we also managed to um, start to fit the side panels as well. So the plane on the inside's starting to look um, a heap better. We also focused on the little center console um, that uh, sits in the front, uh, front side. So yeah, so we ticked off a lot of things and this is documenting what happened on the remainder of that day. At the end of this episode, I just wanted to cover off a few more viewer questions that have come through the page. I just want to keep ticking those off um, until I've got them all answered. Hope you enjoy. Oh no? No, I can still do, I'll do that next time. Uh, okay, all right, well. Done the back all right, well, that is us. So the first part of today was about getting those cows fitted. And in this first part, you'll see James carefully drilling holes in both the upper and lower cows to prepare them for the cam locks on the Sling TSI. These cam locks are really crucial for securing the cows, ensuring everything that stays firmly in place, but also importantly, allows for quick and easy access during maintenance or pre-flight checks. Yeah. Could be a any secret um, rivets in here that I need to be aware of? <laughs> <laughs> so it's the dome ones? Yeah, countersunk, so it's the same as those ones. I'll just get the other one. It's got a, a, a flat head. Yeah. I'm not going to countersunk holes, so I won't look yep. right in there. Cool. Uh, they should be all great, but just check it. All right. I made a bit of fun here, but I've learnt the hard way on this one. You can never ever trust that the tub of rivets that you're using are the correct type all the time. So you always need to sense check. Um, trust me, I have learnt this one the hard way and for all you future builders, take note. That's the part that attaches to the top cowling. Yep. Quarter of a turn. Quarter of a turn, yep, cool. Now that we'd started to drill all the holes, it was now all about fastening those cam locks in position. So uh, I'm shooting through there, doing the remainder of uh, the riveting. And James is going through and just finishing off the last little bit of drilling that needs to be done. This is kind of starting to get a little bit exciting because we're finally going to start to see our cows meet properly together, all uh, locked into place and fastened. Um, so pretty cool little achievement. Um, just another one of those little steps in the build, which is cool. Yeah, just put one rivet in that last one. Okay. So just one there. I'll have a look at that one, it's on. Okay. Oh, that's a lot of bloody wires. <laughs> Ooh, what's happened here? That one was a bit close to the back. Oh, I'll, I'll put it on and see where it ends up. Mm. Is that sort of overlapping? Um, have you already drilled bowls in both? Um, why? Can you just see me that thing? Or that one? I think. Why did you just do it like that, James? I was th yeah, I was thinking that. That could work. Yeah. Just go like that? Yeah. <laughs> I'll just, uh... All right. Screw in it, then we can use that to clamp it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but that's good. The closer it is to the back, the nicer it pulls the sides in. But yeah, it was like about three millimeters too, too close. Yeah. Then, it's all of these things. I think the tricky, the tricky bit is going to be that full bloody channel again. Have we done the channel yet? No, not. So yes, that channel yeah, was that a bit sort of thing. Yeah, that one may, may have to come off as well. Oh, boy. It's a dead dog. 
Just open me high enough to see. Oh, oh, fat. And around the, bo the bottoms there too, mate. Uh, not those ones. Not those ones. Okay. Yeah. They get the screw side. Sweet. So the next part of the video just shows us delving into the firewall forward kit, and it sort of becomes a game of spinning plates now. So there's a heap of things that we've sort of got underway and and under under process, but you've got to try and keep finding things to do. So we sort of jump around a little bit from here. Need to redo this one for us. Finish that one off for us. And we've got the air intakes. And the throttle quadrant is the wrong one, so Alicia must order us a full throttle quadrant. Uh, the three. In that is something that actually should be part of a kit. And it should, should the upgrade kit. Yeah, it should, it should be part of the upgrade kit because they don't give that to us. Um, still but yeah, there's still a lot of things that can go in there. The uh, because I think tomorrow, um, uh, they're slowly coming together and doors and things can be fitted and checked and locks and shit. Um, oh, why do they always keep sending us for bloody short ones? I you know, the problem they, is they, they sent... They made the door bigger. Yeah, but they sent us the doors and the cows, but they don't send us hinges. Yeah. Okay, so I want you to start making me a list yeah, because we're next great all of this shit must come. So this is gonna, this is gonna really seriously hold us back. Have you got a piece of paper? I'll stick it on the side. Please. Um, you can... Uh, start making a list of things that we're gonna need pretty urgently because once those wings and shit comes back from painting this probably can go so yeah this is the dreary work but once all these things are yeah on and settled then uh yeah yeah and then the other thing that we're gonna need to do possibly start with all that silicon yeah that needs to be dug out yeah be careful not to not to not to cut scratch the window or so I'll show you how to do that. Just take the little blade, put it in there and then put the blade sideways. Yeah. Just comes out. It's okay if it's okay on this there's, there's quite a neat little gap between the window and the frame, which mm. is nice. On mine there was almost no gap and then shit it's hard to put new silicon in there. Yep. Um, I think that new that new uh, seal that we have James well, the V seal is going to work very well on here. Yeah. I think it's going to work much better on here than the other one, because the other one never is fantastic. And, and also, it sticks to it sticks to paint bloody well. Uh, so, seat belts are in. We will, I think, after lunch, we'll come and do finish off the routing of all this wires really nicely. So, that this is all in. done with that. And then you can start with a, the floor, putting the floors yeah. in. Rubbing the floors in place. That's good. Yeah? Yeah, and that uh, channel across the back seat now. Yeah, yeah. And the, the ones on the sides and the inside skins. Yep. So there's still a lot to do. I mean, inside there's skins must go in, floors must go in, but now that all the controls are in and the, the brake hose lines, oh, we must maybe just finish all the brake hose there before we start fitting the. I'll have to bring a tee from the airfield. Uh, okay, but, 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 but like that, we can do the job. As long as we tie up, uh, tie it to the ribs there. Yes. I don't know if we usually do. But you tie them? Just to, with the standoffs away from the ribs. Well, I would, I would think with that plastic hose there, it never in its life. It doesn't move anyway. Yeah, this, this thing is not moving. Once it's connected there, this is not moving. And this piece of hose, it's going to take many, many, many years to cut through that. Well, yeah. it will not cut through that hose because yeah. there's no movement there. It's not like something that does that at all. What's that, what is that? It's just your brake line. Uh, okay. So your brake line, you've got a line inside the plastic tube, and the plastic tube is really protect. That's exactly what we'll do with the wires going here. So you know the plastic tubes that surround it can't, it can cannot move. So yeah, floors can go in, uh, roof nuts can go in, 
This can go in. The side skins can literally go in. So yeah, lots of work. And all of that can... So, let's go for a coffee break. What do you think? What's that little box? This is the center console. Oh, yeah. It goes in between the two front seats. Oh, nice. There'll be a, a, a lid on the top there. You plug your headset jacks into there. Yep. And um, yeah, that's where the seat bolts come through. So once we get the interior, they'll be all covered in leather. Perfect. So once we got the centre console completed, it was time to move on to the rear floors. You can sort of see here exactly what I was talking about before in terms of the spinning plates. Right now we've probably got about five to six different things that are on the go all at once. And this is a little bit at this stage where I started to reflect that the build assist program had slightly changed to what I was used to. Not in a bad way, it was just that it was very different. And what I mean by that is in the early stages of the build, you've got a very specific task that may take two, three days to complete, like the wings. But here, you've got a lot of different things that are going on, in particular in the interior of the uh, fuselage and also that firewall forward component. This part of the video shows the bottom part of the cowl fully fastened in now with those cam locks and all the hard work that we'd done to make sure that there was great fit on those cows was now starting to be really evident. How good does that look? So that one of the parts we've got over there will go across and cover that and hold there. Yep. So that holds up the back seat. So there's that and that stringer there isn't riveted on. And that one's just in temporarily. Gotcha. Oh, yep, so So that concluded day number 11 and it was a huge day, uh, lots of time obviously in the previous video on the wiring and really to be honest my head was exploding by the end of it but what I came out of it from all of that was a deeper understanding of how my aircraft operates and that can only be a positive in the future particularly if I have any issues to troubleshoot whether or not on the ground or in the air. The inside of the plane was also starting to take shape obviously with the rear floor going down the rear seats and starting to get some of those side skins on. I was most proud today though of the upper and lower cows being fastened on the cameras certainly don't capture all of the amount of work that goes into getting these fitted and obviously going in I knew that the cows were going to be a bit of a headache to put on just from previous builders experience that I've seen but James made it look really really easy and helped me a ton and I can't thank him enough. Alrighty guys uh, thanks for watching that hope, hope you enjoyed it. Getting to the viewer questions that I've got to answer today, uh, the first one's probably the most common question that I get through the page and that's around cost. Everyone's really um, interested in what the build's going to cost and I guess probably understanding what the process is and that's probably the viewers I would imagine that haven't reached out to Errol. So the first question, the first point that I would make around that is, you know, I, I would not be nervous about giving Errol a call. Um, once again, they're very transparent with their pricing and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm certainly not the, the oracle with this stuff, but uh, he should be your first point of call. And I would say to you in terms of the pricing that's been delivered to me, I've said it time and time again, but it's really transparent. 
there's a base level cost in, in the plane, um, and then there's all of the additional add-ons. And then on those additional add-ons, there's a lot of recommended um, that come from Errol um, in terms of these are the things that you should recommend, and that's pretty transparent on that price list as well. Um, but you know he will be able to give you a really really good indication of you know whether or not you're looking for a VFR plane, um, an IFR capable plane, um, and the different um, price breaks between a sling um, TSI and a high wing. So in terms of my build, those that have been watching the build um, know pretty much all what my gear is is um, going into the plane. So I'm not going to waffle on about any of that. So you know that I'm building an IFR certified plane without a parachute um, as part of that one. So no parachute or parachute skin. And I'm not gonna get too much change out of the mid fives um, here in Australian dollars. If I was to build the same type of aircraft from a high wing perspective, I've, I've mentioned this with or I've discussed this with Errol, you basically need to add 50K from a TSI to a high wing in terms of the cost. So if I was to get the same type of plane in a high wing, I'm probably looking at somewhere in the sixes um, to be able to get that built here in Australia. Um, just remember, there are heaps of different options to be able to get this done. So you do not have to do a build assist. That adds more cost to the build. It's the way that I wanted to do it and for reasons that I've explained in all the videos. Um, the experience from that has been amazing. But you can certainly get factory built ones. Um, and also, you know, if IFR certification isn't a, um, a point of interest to you, you can get a VFR certified or a VFR plane um, for, for much less. And I think that if I wanted to go a VFR plane, I probably could have got something built um, in the high fours um, if, I, if I was looking to try and build a system. But again, if I had got a factory um, build, uh, would have been a, a little bit cheaper as well too. So I hope that that sort of answers your question. Um, there is never going to be a good time to buy a sling. Um, prices are going to continue to go up. Uh, inflation is going to continue. So um, if you're waiting for prices to go down, it's just not going to happen. And you know, my case in point, uh, I waited for a couple of years and I really um, have suffered for that. So that's probably just my two cents worth. <clears throat> All right, so the next question is from Samuel, and Samuel is worried about the insurance in the experimental class here in Australia. So, yep, I was as well. So he wanted to have a bit of an insight into whether or not I've looked at that, and it has been covered way back in the early days. However, that said, um, it's really an important topic and something that you really need to consider because it's a, it's a big fixed cost each year. Um, so, look, I'm a low hour pilot and, uh, and in terms of the price pricing that I've been given from the aligned um, insurance provider through Global Aviation Product, um, I'm really, really happy. Um, so when I say aligned, I just want to make sure that I'm clear on that one. There's no commercial connection between those two, um, completely separate, um, but I think it's Agile Insurance um, is the man and chatted directly with those guys and they were able to provide me a really nice quote. Um, once again, very transparent, all that sort of stuff. Um, but there is an alignment there between Sling Australia and, uh, and those guys in terms of the insurance and that's what keeps the, the um, premiums a little bit lower. Um, so a, a Sling specific insurance, which is pretty cool. So yeah, in terms of my insurance, I'm looking at around about $6,000 per year. And I know from um, my um, research in terms of um, VH registered aircraft for my type of hours, um, in some places I was getting uh, a quote of ten to $12,000 a year. So I am completely happy with my decision to go to a sling. All right guys, so um, still got a couple more questions to get through and I will cover them on the next couple of episodes. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I'll see you very soon for day number 12. Cheers, guys.